Welcome to Aerodynamics. Alright, so this is our game and the first thing I want to talk about is the terrain. So the terrain is procedurally generated. It uses a Perlin noise function to, to differ in the heights of the hills. And we have like this water that was just like a unity standard asset that we placed and the terrain gets kind of placed over top of it. And the higher parts have the land and the lower parts have the water. The trees are placed randomly. And as well, the enemies spawn randomly too, and the, the spawning makes sure that they're not spawning the enemies like on a tree position or out of bounds, so it checks to make sure that it's spawning it in a good location. Um, we'll talk about the HUD next. So we have our HP at the top left corner, the score and the high score in the bottom left, so you know what your score is and you know what the high score is, so I got the high score last time I played the game. And there's a timer on the right hand side since this is like an arcade style survival kill as much as you can game. We just gave it a timer and see how much damage you can do in the five minutes. And in the top right hand corner is the mini map. So the mini map is uh, basically just a camera that writes to a texture and that texture is applied to a, a cylinder. So we get the, the illusion of the mini map with that and the the red circles are for the dinos because they're more dangerous and all the other enemies get the yellow dots. Um, we have a couple screens too, like you saw the loading screen and we have like the pause menu so it shows you the controls and allows you to restart or quit. Um, we also have like a screen for when you die. So I can show you that now, I'll just let the guys go. So when you die, you, lose, you just get a, the option to restart the game. So we'll restart it. And then when the timer runs out, you get a You Survived too, which you'll see after this run. Um, so I think that's all for the HUD. So we can talk about the character next. Uh, we used the character controller for the, for the character. Since we didn't want realistic physics movement, we just want kinematic quick, you know. She runs really fast, you can strafe side to side. When she jumps, you can control her movement in the air. There's like the low gravity. So we really want like an arcade style, kind of Halo, third person shooter controller for the character. We didn't want anything to be too realistic. We wanted it to be fun. Kind of over the top. Um, for the arrows, she shoots three different types of arrows. This is the normal arrow, the white one. So the longer I hold it down to, I think, a cap of four seconds, the more damage it does. So if I hold it down for four seconds, it's going to do a lot more damage than it does by one second. Um, and there's the poisonous arrow. So that's like a particle system that has a collider and it spreads out over time and if any of the enemies run through it they get poisoned and it will slowly take away their health so you see the if I drop a poisonous arrow here you see the spiders will die a little bit after and he'll die so basically it eats away at their health slowly and uh, kills them over time. Uh, we have the explosive arrow which again is a particle prefab and when it hits, it does a sphere cast at where it hits. And the closer the enemies are to the center of that sphere cast, the more damage it does. So I'm just going to walk around the map here for a second. And the arrow is shot with an impulse force, so it has a rigid body attached to it. And when it's instantiated, it just has an impulse force it's added to it. There's also a collider near the tip of the arrow. So that gives it kind of the trajectory of a normal arrow. Since the collider is near the tip, it changes the center of mass of the rigid body. So you see it, it, it kind of goes down like a normal arrow. That's just through the unity physics system. That you don't have to do any math or anything for that. The, the unity physics just took care of that for us. All right, so next we're gonna talk about the enemies. So we'll first talk about the dinos. They use uh, a star pathfinding for their wandering. So basically when the terrain's generated, there is like a, a node grid system built on top of it. And so there's nodes like placed on the map that say you can walk or you can't walk. So nodes around the trees would be unwalkable. Obviously nodes on the trees not walkable. And uh, if water, the depth of water is checked, and if the water is too deep for the dinos, then uh, those nodes are set to unwalkable too. So basically the dinos just wander using A star pathfinding on that uh, node grid. And They'll wander along that until I shoot one, and it will chase me. Or if I get too close, it'll chase me, so you see, like, wrong arrow. So if I shoot him, if I get too close, they, they chase me, and if I shoot them, they'll also chase me. 
So it's kind of how they work. They will chomp you when they get close. That's their attack animation. They're the, they're the most dangerous enemy in the game. They do a lot of damage. And they also they spawn randomly. So there's different types of colors. So there's green, red, or gray. As well as they have different sizes when they spawn. The sizes affects their attacks and their defense. So the next enemy we can talk about is the tree goblin. Um, they follow the trees when you walk by. There's like a 50-50 chance they'll spawn. So there's one spawn he follows. Gets up. Oh, and I died. So yeah, he spawns and he falls out of the tree and he gets up and chases you. Let's see if I won't come up. But there's only a 50 chance that he'll, he'll come. And basically once he spawns, he just pursues you until he's either dead or catches you and kills you. So, so there's one who falls out, lands on the ground, gets up. And he'll chase me and he'll stop and attack me when he gets close. It's so basically him, he's fast, so you know, he presents an immediate threat. Uh, we can look at the range goblins next. They pathfind from tree to tree on the map. So basically we had to set up a line of sight nodes at each tree. And the way we did that was uh, you just call terrain.getActiveTrees and it returns you an array of all the trees that are painted on the terrain. And you just have to scale those pos this position of each of those trees on the terrain to the actual size of the terrain, plus the origin of the terrain. And that gives you the position of all the trees. And like since this was dynamically it's dynamically created every uh, every time you play, we really needed to be able to know where the trees were. So it took a little bit of figuring out to be able to do that. So once we had those nodes placed, they just pathfind from tree to tree. So they find a tree that's really far away, and they pathfind to it. And each tree you can see every other tree that's 300 units. It's kind of the line of sight that we use. If the tree is within 300 units, then it's visible. Otherwise, it's not, and the goblins find a, a target tree that's at least 500 units away. So when I get too close to them, they, uh, they'll they throw spears and axes at me. And if I get far enough away, the yeah, axe, they'll go back to his pathfinding. They also use uh, collision avoidance. They raycast forward, and if they hit a tree, and though they have a force applied in the opposite direction of their movement and to the right, uh, this and the, they stop pathfinding for a second too, so they can get around the tree. So if we just watch him, maybe we'll see it there. Yeah, he just avoided that tree there. And it doesn't always work, because you can see those guys over there. Uh, the last thing we can talk about is the spiders. So they use a flocking behavior. So basically, there's a swarm controller that takes care of updating an array of all the spiders on the map. And each spider uses that swarm controller to find spiders uh, around it. So if it's within 100 units, the spider will, will join a swarm together. And basically until they find the character, they just ra uh, wander to a random point on the map. So that point is chosen by the swarm controller and it's based off the size of the map. And the point is always somewhere that is walkable. Um, so they walk there, but since it changes every 8 seconds, so all the spiders on the map don't group up in one swarm. They kind of, they almost get to the point, and the point changes, and like through that behavior, we get a nice like uh, set of swarms, depending on where you go in the map. And yeah, for the spy, the spiders flocking there, there's a nice group over there. They just use uh, three methods that calculate separation. Oh, you saw them switch directions too, because the target changed. So they use separation, cohesion, and alignment, and these three uh, calculations return three vectors. And uh, it gives the, the flocking behavior. We just had to reduce the weight of the cohesion. They were getting too close together and they were bunching on top of each other. So we reduced it down to like 0.4. And uh, they, stay, they stay apart better. So with the flocking, they, uh, the alignment just takes their, their velocity and their direction. And they kind of add it all up and divide it by the number of people in their swarm. And that gives them their alignment. The separation is just... Uh, which I can't remember now, and the cohesion, I can't remember any of the functions because they're all like coded a while ago, I don't have them in front of me. But the, the flocking behavior is really nice, it, it worked out really well. And it's pretty cool because you can just get all the spiders in a group and then blow them up with your explosive. stand like over here like all the spiders will start attacking me when they get close and, like the screen shakes when you get attacked just to let you know you're taking damage and these are like the power-ups that drop when you kill the enemies
And there's also a slow motion feature that's kind of fun to use so I can like slow down time and hop over a dinosaur and shoot down a poison arrow. Just like lets you shoot more accurately and kind of have fun with the game. The main purpose of this game is just to have, have a lot of fun and just be able to kill a lot of stuff and try to demonstrate some, some intelligent AI. And it works out pretty well most of the time. So I believe I've touched everything I want to talk about on the game. Thanks for watching, and there's the timer on us, so there's the you survive screen. Uh, thank you very much.